Hey, listen up. Yeah, we here and we locked in. Let's keep it going all the way to the top ten. We feel the thorough, so it's no other option. Fred and Ryan, just watch them. Let's take it to the max. It's the shell and tell. They come with all the facts. It's the shell and tell. Let's take it to the max. It's the shell and tell. They come with all the facts. It's the shell and tell. Welcome back, everybody. I've pulled myself out of my uh, somber feelings. Got myself right back in front of this mic to touch base with you, Shell and Tell Nation out there. Those of you that are left. It's been an interesting year. We were victims of our own expectations and then further victimized by expectations put on this team by the head coach even the most diehard fans out there we're looking at eight nine wins period that's the crazy the crazy the fan of the fan the red sunglasses red underwear whatever you want to call it eight or nine wins And then Coach Locks talks about this team being a place to compete for Big Ten championships. And we might be new to the Big Ten. We might be. But we know what that means. One loss tops. That's what a Big Ten championship is in the Big Ten East especially. You can lose one time. That's it. 11-1. and That was not his expectation. But he said it's time to compete. For an 11-1 and one season. So now all of a sudden you get in our heads. Oh, I thought eight. He thinks there's a chance at 11. Maybe that means the floor is nine. Maybe that means average year is 10. Hey, we could do it. Maybe we go 11-1. and one. We talked about it on the show. Had me convinced that we were going to lose to Penn State and win in the rest of the games. I was convinced of that at one point this year. And that was before, I believe, it was before the Ohio State game. It had to be because we hadn't hadn't lost yet. And then going into that third quarter of the Ohio State game, I was convinced we were on a path for 11 wins. Then it all fell apart. You all know this. We had an awful fourth quarter against Ohio State. Fell on our face. We had a game against Illinois that's just kind of hard to put your finger on. We just could never get out of our way. It wasn't that bad a game. It certainly wasn't a good game. We were losing most of the game, but yet I don't think anyone in the stadium really felt like we were going to lose. You didn't really hear a lot of naysaying or booing. or It was just kind of like, Death by a thousand paper cuts. And all of a sudden, the seconds are ticking off the clock, and we go, holy God, we just lost two in a row. We didn't have our bounce-back game that we needed. And if we were supposedly able to compete with Ohio State, how can an Illinois team compete with us? This doesn't make any sense. And we're licking our wounds and we're sad, but like the season's not over at that point. You have winnable games in front of you. You still feel like really it's only one game you shouldn't have lost in Illinois. Most people expected Ohio State to either be a loss or be one of the highest likely losses on the year if you were drinking the red Kool-Aid and really thought we were going for 10, 11 wins. So there's really only one. And every team pretty much has one except for the top, top tier that until Loxley told us we might be in that category. Nobody thought we were in that category. Let me go up to Chicago in Northwestern in front of 47 people on like a damp day. No one there seems to care. I think it was only like 
sisters and moms. I think even the dads had given up on the Northwestern players. There was nobody in the stadium. And we just decided not to play at all. I can't remember, outside of that very first offensive drive, I can't remember an uglier game by everybody. But especially our defense. Our defense just decided that they weren't getting off the bus. And I went in a really dark place. I mean, I know you guys are like, why are we talking about the past? Why are we so far back? You know, I wasn't here. I wasn't able to dig myself out of this hole that I'm trying to explain to you that 22 years, I've been half glass full, half three quarters full, full, full on these terps. And I can't explain the level of emptiness after that Northwestern loss. Because I felt stupid. I felt like all my thoughts on this team were completely irrational. That the idea that we could even get close to 10 wins, the idea that we could even compete with the big three in the Big Ten East was insane. And that I had been completely wrong in all of my projections in all of my hope in all of the energy put into the team don't don't get me wrong in 22 years i had been depressed about the team but i had never been depressed about the future i always found a way out i always thought of what they could do to take the next step where they could put money into this program, what coach they could turn to, what recruit we needed to get. There was always something to reach out and look forward to. And in that Northwestern moment, I couldn't find any of it. I mean, you guys know how supportive we are of locks. I, I just, Again, do not see a world where we can do better. Do I think he's a perfect coach? No, of course not. But there's no other coach that wins 10 games at University of Maryland and is back on the sidelines the next year. Nobody else. If anybody else comes to University of Maryland and wins 10 games, that's the last time we win 10 games because they are moving on and they are taking their staff and players with them in the NIL era. So why would you Why would you sell on Loxley when he's the only one, if it works, that will persist. Or you can have multiple winning seasons. But in that moment, with some bad play calls, with some terrible clock management, with just some confusing, like, I mean, at that, again, the worst part about Northwestern was that our defense was non-existent. Literally, a JV squad would have had the exact same result against them. Exact same one. <laughs> no stops. Just down the field, being picked apart by a backup quarterback at Northwestern. And, you know, the one shining piece that we were worried we were going to lose to a head coaching position in Brian Williams, you know, was, was it all fake? Was it all based off of, Two NFL caliber corners? Was that why he looked so good the last couple of years? I can hide a lot of mistakes. Look at Dante Banks. Marvin Harrison Jr. says he's the best player that he faced. Look what he's doing in the NFL. That's a hell of a weapon to cover up flaws in your scheme. But you trudge through. I couldn't bring myself to get in front of the mic, but didn't. But I did stop myself from selling my season tickets. And for the first time in 22 years, I strongly considered not renewing. Just like, what am I wasting? My time, energy, fighting against people, defending the fact that I want to spend six Saturdays a year there instead of whatever childhood sport or whatever might be happening in the fall. And trying to keep my kids we just play spring sports we don't play fall sports 
We need sports on Wednesdays in the fall. We can't have Saturday sports. What's that? What's all that fighting time and energy for if this is what we're going to get out of it? So it was in a dark, dark place um, with that. I definitely got through it, and uh, I have basically made a unilateral decision for all future that I will continue to buy my tickets even after I decide not to go. I want a buffer season because <laughs> apparently the first one, 22 years, I was emotional enough to make an emotional decision about something that I really value and have enjoyed the tradition of it and the sharing it with family, the sharing it with my children and trying to make it more than it is for most people. And so there will be a buffer season. It hopefully will not be next season. I think we're right back on board. I'm going to be at every game, doing every tailgate, everything. But whenever that time is that they break me again, and maybe permanently, because I'm sure it will happen, my seats will be purchased, and they will be either sat empty or sold to get some of the money back. I don't know, but I'm not, I'm not giving them up. Um, made that commitment to myself and now I've made it here and we'll be sticking to that. So hopefully they just stop breaking me. Then we trudge along to Nebraska. And you know, we get that first, first down and I'm right back in it. Peppy engaged in the game, looking for a win. And it trudges along and it trudges along and it feels like nobody wants to win it. We're not good enough to win it. They're not good enough to win it. But the defense that disappointed the absolute hell out of me came up clutch over and over again. Big plays. And it's just confusing. I'm not excited. I'm not happy about that win. But I'm can start counting again and look all right we're bowl eligible still have at least one more winnable you can pull a miracle off these guys nobody you know we went out to ann arbor last year with kaylee and fred nobody thought we had a chance and we won all but six seconds of it so you gave us a chance we showed up positive thinking hopeful made some big bets And we gave it a run. This time, instead of the first six seconds, it was a two-minute window at the end of the first quarter. That was devastating. A Blake Corum touchdown, 30 seconds later, a fumble by Talia for six points, and three snaps later, a blocked punt that was a safety heads-up play by Segovia to kick it out of bounds. It already been even worse. One of two safeties in the day. Kind of, if you let the refs go and count. But you look and you, the whole time, you were never out of it. There was that one period right there where you kind of felt down, but they made the big stop before halftime. They got some scores, made you believe, got within striking distance. But there's just all these moments that would have made us win. So many moments. There's that two minutes that you could erase any piece of it. Of like, and you win. Then you have three fourth down attempts and a third and 19 that are all converted. Any one of those, which all ended up in six points, and you win. It's There's so many little things. And it felt pretty good. It didn't feel great. It didn't feel like that Ohio State loss that me and Fred talk about and the missed two-point conversion where I left the stadium smiling because it was the first time I really felt that juice from a big-time game, and even though we were on the wrong side of it, I could see the future. It certainly did not feel like that. But it felt like a respectable loss. It felt like more than I expected, For to be honest. And it started to make you think maybe you weren't crazy. Maybe you weren't lied to. Maybe they're just kids and 
crazy shit happens. I mean, you competed with two of the top teams in the nation. There's an outside chance that both of them are in the playoff. I don't think it'll happen. There's too many undefeated teams. I think the winner of the game between Ohio State and Michigan will be the only, the lone representative of the Big Ten. But you really thought that we could pull it off there. And it didn't feel lucky. It didn't feel like we were catching breaks. It felt felt like we were catching no breaks and still competitive. It felt like our offense was significantly better than their offense. They had a much better offensive line. And that's it. I know Blake Corum is better than our running backs, but Blake Corum really didn't show much in this game, not compared to other years where he's gashed us. I don't think their quarterback's any good. I think J.J. McCarthy is a game manager with an amazing defense and a great running game, and he's a game manager. And pretty much as long as we put them in passing downs, our defense was solid. We were able to do what they needed to do. I, I don't... Ohio State's looked pretty good since us, but they couldn't run the ball at all versus us. So you are going to have to run the ball to beat Michigan. Maybe. We almost did it without beating Michigan, without running the ball. I certainly don't think they're going to have two safeties and a defensive touchdown scored against Ohio State. But it makes you look forward. It makes you think that there is a chance that this year ends up being not progress, but not a regression. It doesn't make you happy, no. But if we get the win versus Rutgers this week, if you go to a bowl and get the win as we've been doing in bowl games, because when you have our record in the Big Ten East, that's usually better than a similar record anywhere else. The only matchup that I'm not in love with right now is uh, some projections having us versus USC, since they've also been a floundering school out there. I don't know. I was glad to dodge Caleb Williams that USC was going to be after he left. I don't really want to play him, but, you know, if they line up, we'll line up. There is a chance where you could then argue for minor progress. That minor progression we talk about would be against the big three. It would be the fact that we went from getting blown out by everybody a couple years ago to being blown out by Ohio State and Penn State to being blown out by just Penn State. You had two very competitive games versus very top-level competition. Is it something to hang your hat on? No, there are no moral victories, but it's something. Because if you went out and showed another game like you did versus Penn State, how does he talk to a recruit? How does he look him in his face and say it's working? That losing the players that we're going to lose this offseason, we're still going to be competitive. I don't know how you sell that. I don't honestly know how you sell it now, but there's a chance. NIL world's weird. There's still some COVID years out there. I know Loxley was trying to recruit Ruben back on the 105.7 The Fan broadcast with Johnny Holiday, the grill marks pregame that Ruben was on. We're going to need a lot of pieces to fall in place to be at that same eight-win mark. But it's not too shabby. Not the year we looked for. Certainly not the year we promised. But at the beginning of the year, before Loxley opened his mouth and gave us unrealistic expectations, it's a year that a lot of us predicted. I was trying to wrap my head back around that. Trying to move forward. And hoping that the Terps keep giving me an excuse to do so. What are they going to do? They're going to go up here Thanksgiving weekend, up to Jersey, short little ride. A place where we've embarrassed them multiple times. But a team that has been improving. A team that has a somewhat mobile quarterback, which has been a real problem for us at times over the years and even this year. 
they're not as good as the teams we've competed with, but they're not as bad as the teams we've lost to. So what do you do with that? Right now, they're a one-point road favorite, which I guess says that we're about three points better than them, or four points better than them on a neutral site. Is you know, the basic math of gambling. But on what day? Because on Northwestern Day, we're 16 points worse than them. And on the Ohio State-Michigan game, we're probably 21 to 24 points better than them. Who are we? I do have a theory. I think that we have a very showy team. A team that likes to prove people wrong. A team with a lot of attitude. And I think that the number one detriment to this team is a lack of a crowd to show off for. I think they really feed more than the usual squad off the stands. They are not playing with blinders on. They are not playing on the field. They are feeding off the environment. You've seen, we've talked about before with the just slow starts with the half empty stadiums well you look at the games that they played like absolute garbage and illinois was a rainy cruddy day at college park and no one decided to come i don't know some fake number on the attendance but probably twenty thousand people there lots of gray silver bleachers to play in front of no motivation Northwestern, like we talked about, even worse. There was nobody there. I've never seen a stadium that empty. No one. Empty. And I don't know how you fix it. I do think that's a coaching problem, but I also think it can just be a personality issue. That the, the ones that we are recruiting here right now, the level we're at, that are good enough to play and are good enough to make, they came here to make a statement. They came here to move this program next level, to be a first in something, to be a legend that moved this from a mediocre Division I program to a competitive Big Ten squad. And so with that thought process, you're also doing it to prove something. You need people to prove it to. So let's hope for good weather. I mean, Rutgers is not the most intimidating area. The kids are going to be on Thanksgiving break, I'm sure, up there. So let's hope it's really good weather and some locals come out, whether it's our fans or their fans. It doesn't seem to matter for the team. It just needs to be fans. I think I'm going to wait. and I think I'm going to look at the stadium, and if I – Think it's embarrassingly empty. I will put money against us just for that emotional hedge and hope I lose my money. But I've, as of now, that's the theory I'm riding with is these guys play for the stands. And, you know, I wish we could do a better job giving them more stands to play for. That's on us. That's, that's the fan standard that has been lacking at University of Maryland that we've discussed. Can't do much about the Northwestern stands. I can't expect us to travel that well to Northwestern to fill their stadium for them. That's just, that's an unrealistic, never going to happen thing for Maryland. But we should be doing better for them at home. These boys are trying. There's no quit in them. It's not that team from four years ago that just folded when they got down two scores. It's not even, even on the games where we've sucked. It's, there has been dogs in the fight till the end. Sometimes they didn't have it, but there was there was there was no give up. As far as the betting goes, right now I'm looking at DraftKings. Looks like uh, my two favorite bets right now would be the alternate spread, Maryland minus six, because again, if we are the better team that day, I don't think it's close. If we play. The way we are supposed to play, the way we played against Ohio State and Michigan and even Indiana and Virginia, now that we've seen that those teams are better, I don't think it's close. If the unmotivated lack of discipline team shows up, we already lost anyway. So those, the couple points you're giving up to make up 
to make it plus 183 instead of minus 108. I think it's a no-brainer. So the alternate spread at Maryland at minus six. I like that a lot. And the other bet that I liked was the longest touchdown. I would also take Maryland for that one. I think we're more of an explosive team. A plus 115 for Maryland having the longest touchdown. There's so many players on our team that could be. It could be a Ty Felton. It could be a Chambers. It could finally be a breakaway run for one of these running backs that we have not seen in forever. But I just think we're a much more explosive team. And so I, I give us the edge there. There are no player props yet. I keep my eyes out for those. Tweet those over the weekend if I like any of them. I just hope for the best. Hope they can get us the seventh win. Get us a bowl. See what I do with that information. Because at times I've decided it just wasn't going. I wasn't putting a bunch of money into it. At other times I start looking to see... Maryland's projected to the Las Vegas Bowl. How do I not go to Vegas to see the Terps? We'll see. Don't a lot of breakdown. Don't a lot of things to talk about with the team. The offensive line, we know it's still not very good. Talia takes more sacks than he should, but he also makes plays that are better than any quarterback we've had in a long, long time. And we're probably going to miss this, unfortunately. I know it's a frustrating ride we're gonna miss this and i truly believe he gave maryland everything he had no doubt in my mind he gave the terps everything i hope we get it done i hope you all enjoy your thanksgiving i hope this wasn't too overly depressing because it's really not supposed to be i'm just trying to get out there why i abandoned you guys why I couldn't get in front of the mics, what I've been suffering through, which I'm sure is very similar to the rest of you. I know I talked to a few fans that had the same thoughts after Northwestern about just dumping these tickets. But we're not going to. We're Maryland fans. That's what we do. We suffer. We have the highs and then many, many, many lows. (laughs) But it makes those victories all that more sweet. We've talked about before. I don't think I'd want to be in Alabama that wins every game and that only the losses hurt and the wins don't really seem to matter anymore. That's not interesting to me. I would really like to get into this eight to 10 win section. It would be a lot more fun than the five to seven. And I don't know how we're going to get there, but I'm sure going to be there watching and rooting them on as they try. Till next time, guys, here's the wishing. All is well under the shell.